Hi, my name is Mark Bonner. I've been dentist for 40 years and I've been treating periodontal disease for 30 years. And we for sure can say now that we can cure this disease. We've been doing it with the microscope for 30 years. So I just want to explain to you how we can do this. Either your dentist or your patient I think anybody can understand this disease. So we can prevent it, we can detect it early when you're young, uh, young adult, and we can cure it as long as there's some bone left to hold your teeth. But you have to use, I think, the microscope to get rid of this disease. So most people or most patients or dentists they know about periodontal disease we know it is it does um, uh, cause a ma problem on majority of adult world population this is at least half uh, population is uh, has this disease and sometimes it's severe it's five to fifteen percent of any population so what you find will be gum retraction, alveolysis, periodontal pockets when you measure the gum, tooth mobility, inflammation, bleeding, halitosis, and tooth loss. So it does uh, touch many patients. And we know now that there are systemic association uh, disease with this periodontitis. So you find more cardiovascular disease, chronic pulmonary disease, pneumonia, kidney disease, arthritis, obesity problem, diabetes is more problem, preterm birth and low birth uh, weight in women. So this is very important disease to take care of and cure. So now what we can do is use this microscope to understand this disease. So on the left side you have uh, biofilm, which is microbes you have within the gum, within the sulcus. On the left side, you have good microbe, you have health. When you have health, you only find those little bacteria, non-motile bacteria, which are cocoid-like, just cocci, and filament. It's like dots and lines and you have uh, epithelial cell which come from the gum when we take the sample so there's no pain you just take one minute we take this sample and we look on the microscope on at 1000 magnification on hospital grade microscope so this is help for everybody on the right side is very different so you will see a lot of moving bacteria which are pathogen bacteria and most of the time you'll find those amoeba which are called Antamoeba gingivalis. So Antamoeba gingivalis is like a big bubble here. It is uh, like 1000 times bigger than the small cocoid bacteria and you see those amoeba Antamoeba is almost all the time present also, you can find some neutrophils. So those are PMN here, which are neutrophils, which tells you you have infection within the gum. So looking at the biofilm or oral microbiota from the sulcus, you can clearly see the infection from periodontal disease. It is completely different from normal health. So just looking at the microscope will tell you you have the disease. Most of the time you see in active disease you see the presence of amoeba, those big larvae, into the periodontal pocket. So this is very easy to look. So if we look at the movie, we look at the film of normal biofilm on the television screen which we do with patient this is normal patient you look at the biofilm so this is video of normal biofilm normal microbiota so the only thing you see is most little cocci little filament which make dots and lines dots and lines dots and lines almost not moving 
bacteria. This is normal health to anybody. Anybody you look, young children, there you see epithelial cell, one cell from the gum. You see little more bacteria, filament and cocci, which will make calculus after some time. But there is no disease. Dots and line, cocci and filament. And this patient, here is epithelial cell on the left. So all, if you have this, you can be sure you are cured or you have healthy gum. So this is certain. Now, when we have the disease, periodontal disease, most of the time we find those amoeboid entities that we think it is Entamoeba gingivalis. So this has been known for uh, more than 100 years. So amoeba is very characteristic. The first thing you can look at is the nucleus. You see this nucleus here is four micron wide. You have chromatin and uh, it is fairly round. And you have the pseudopod here, okay, which is like this uh, lobose pseudopod, which, can, which uh, the amoeba can use to um, go around. You see here you have a white cell again, so this is infection and pathogen bacteria, and you have the amoeba which has eaten many things. So this is this looks like an amoeba and we want to make sure this clearly it is the amoeba we find in periodontal disease. So this amoeba was the first one described in human, okay, in uh, 150 more years ago. And we want to know if Antamoeba gingivalis is associated to periodontitis. So we want to improve the detection. We know it is there with the microscope and we want to look at uh, molecular biology. So we do primer design, we choose a DNA portion to make sure we can make this study and the primer we choose was really specific to Entamoeba gingivalis and not the other one we can find in other disease or intestinal disease. Okay. So we make this method, make sure it is specific to Antamoeba gingivalis, which is okay in the dental plaque. And we want to make sure this method is sensitive. So we make sure it is related to Antamoeba gingivalis uh, PCR. So we took start, we did a study with 139 patients in eight clinics in France and uh, we want to study from purification and PCR examination. So we found in the analysis that the sensitivity was high comparative to clinical and microscopic diagnosis. So Antemarba gingivalis clearly is associated to periodontitis, either microscopically or with PCR. So we did a second study in France. We published in Actualité Odontostomatologique in 2013, and we look at anti-parasitic treatment for periodontitis. And we look if it was also present in peri-implantitis, okay? So we evaluate the result obtained from five dental clinic using this anti-parasitic treatment for periodontal disease associated with biofilm, uh, biofilm adjustment with the microscope. So the film was examined with two, 632 periodontal patients and we found on the microscope 99% were positive for Entamoeba gingivalis. We also found this well-known second uh, parasite, which is flagella, which is Trichomonas tenax, in 22% was positive for uh, periodontitis. So and this was done with for an expert microscopic dentist clinician. So what we can observe, we observe this trophozoite. This is 
low power magnification and we can see clearly the proliferation of all those amoeba. Here you see maybe 60 uh, amoeba present in one millimeter wide plaque biofilm from within the periodontitis sulcus. So this is clearly easy to see for a young uh, microscopist, you can see all those amoeba clearly uh, in the biofilm. So when you look at it at 1000 magnification, you see the amoeba clearly is, uh, is moving within the biofilm, creating channels, and you see the capping phenomenon, which is known as a pathogen activity you clearly see the nucleus again so this is all visible on our playlist on uh, youtube uh, under mark barner you also see when you have those parasites you see the parasite the amoeba just eats nucleus of the white cell so we call this phagocytosis and we call it uh, exonucleophagia so you see clearly here the amoeba which is eating with this little black line here, the inside of a normal living neutrophil. So the amoeba does live on living neutrophil, living PMN. So it does destroy your immunity because it removes the nucleus, three, three part here, three part nucleus from the neutrophil. It will literally eat the nucleus and then digest the nucleus within his body. So your nucleus, your, uh, pardon me, your white cell cannot anymore uh, use its normal activity. So this is clearly shown. <coughs> you see also the amoeba moving within the biofilm. So if you wait five minutes on the microscope, you wait a little bit, you'll see the amoeba creating channels into the biofilm. So like here on the bottom right, you see there's a little uh, channel from there to there. And you see from here at 1000 magnification, same area, you see the channel created by the amoeba in some minutes. And here is the amoeba moving. So patients don't know they have this parasite. It's just running around within the sulcus and creating lots of problems. Also, it can uh, reproduce, so many times you have many, many, many amoeba. It's like enormous larva. It's like a nest of amoeba within pus. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here amoeba just going around within the sulcus. This you can see every day on the microscope. Also, you can see that the, this amoeba, those amoeba are living in harmony with bacterial actinomyces, which will form calculus on, into the gum, into the sulcus, will do black calculus uh, further later on. And you see the amoeba living just under it and it, they are eating the white cell under this calculus area. So they have uh, no oxygen and they can reproduce and nest uh, completely. So reproduction you see is like this. It's easy to see within the uh, sulcus of patient. So you see the amoeba just have left this little minuta. Here you have a little minuta form, which has just separated from the mother. Okay, so you see the small one here, your baby one, you see the nucleus that will form chromatin and karyosome, and then you see like a young amoeba, and then you see the adult amoeba with this pseudopome. It is very uh, reactive, and this is uh, what we call trophozoite because it can go everywhere within the sulcus. Sometimes even you can see the amoeba is helping the second amoeba to release those little aminuta baby, uh, baby form of the amoeba. So it does reproduce and they do help each other within the infected uh, sulcus. Also it can adhere to the red cell and it can uh, phagocytize the inside of the red cell to get some iron. So 
The most important thing is what we call exonucleophagy. So this is where the amoeba clearly feed on living neutrophil. So it does uh, numb the PMN first and sometimes they numb many PMNs around and then they go within the cell, they get to the nucleus and just zip the inside of the nucleus to feed on. And they do this only to living PMN uh, and this leaves what we call denucleated ghost cell all around which contains those enzymes that will be delasted into the sulcus and probably create this bone loss. So this is very, you see the evolution of the inside of the nucleus coming into the um, amoeba. Almost here, almost two-thirds done. You see this was another one before, before this is the nucleus. Then exonucleophagy is almost completed and then it will be digested into the amoeba. So this is clearly visible on many patients. So what it looks like on the film when it's moving, maybe it looks like this here moving or going the other way with the pseudopod on the front and the capping area on the left here. So it does, it does give uncontrolled enzymatic PMN material and uh, we think it fragilizes the already inflamed tissue. So it will leave those denucleated, uh, uh, what we call ghost cell, that will break down the bone. So what happened is uh, like in pregnancy periodontitis. So typically this uh, young woman has a problem with the gum. You see the redness of the gum. And if you take just a little bit of plaque just within the sulcus, this is what you will see within this sulcus. Knowing you have problem with baby, uh, preterm, low weight, uh, imagine you have this into your gum. So this is absolutely incredible to keep this. This also is incredible that dentists do not look at this biofilm with microscope to all person having a little bit of gum disease. So every time we look at gum disease this is what we see this is clearly awful to leave those um, those parasites within the sulcus of pregnant uh, lady so you see the amoeba one two three going everywhere you see ghost cell which are neutrophil that loses their nucleus you see the amoeba going up there and one two three four five six this is live within pus, within bacteria. We know are also pathogen, but the tremendous activity of the amoeba is clearly evident here. Here within the uh, filament of actinomyces that will form calculus. You see one amoeba, two amoeba, one ghost cell here. Amoeba going up. Sometimes you can see macrophage, but those are clearly distinct. Here we had little baby amoeba, see many amoeba, many white cells. So patients are infected and this is not possible to keep this within the gum of pregnant lady. You have uh, to look at the microscope to see how evident it is and impossible to leave. So see here many bacteria, see many amoeba just living uh, with the long filament they protect uh, they protect themselves and they do babies and nursing so it's full of parasites in this young lady with this uh, beginning periodontal uh, disease and we know it could create a lot of problem to the baby so um, what we think now is uh, knowing the neutrophil extracellular trap activity, we think those amoeba will um, uh, enable those neutrophil to have their normal net activity. Amoeba will deprive the host cell of their endomembrane system. Amoeba may be able to annihilate PMN capacity to initiate immune response. So this is very important fact within periodontal disease. So exonucleophagy, 
with, is some kind of phagocytosis or some kind of trogocytosis that will affect the immune system and render the impossibility of the system to resolve infection during this periodontitis. So it will lead to chronic alteration. So do not keep those parasites. Those are pathogen parasites. So what we do with the patient in the study, we measure uh, the sulcus. Normal sulcus is one, two or three millimeters deep. And when you have the disease, you, lo you lose some bone. Here we have six millimeter deep uh, sulcus, which tells us you have three millimeter bone loss. So if we look at patients that have periodontal disease, you'll see here bone loss. It's like vertical defect around the teeth. You see many of those vertical bone loss. This is before treatment. When we do anti-parasitic treatment with the microscope, we clearly remove all those parasites, go back to normal, healthy, commensal biofilm, and then what we see, we see the bone resolve, the bone grows back again within those sulcus. So this is evident, this is easy, no need to uh, create a bone. Bone will, uh, will heal by itself, but you have to go back to this normal biofilm I showed you at the beginning. So another case here, you see initial examination, you see the bone loss, vertical bone loss here, 10 millimeter deep pocket. And then at nine months within treatment, you see how the bone will fill. And this is the same patient at 21 months, at uh, 12 months after the end of treatment. You see how the bone goes back in place just by itself. It will resolve by itself. So, result of this technique, uh, antiparasitic treatment compared to bacterial treatment or even surgery is completely different. So, if we look at those 600 patients who have been treated, mean healing, this is closing pocket without surgery, without surfaceage without deep scaling, just removing the bugs, disinfection, just detartrage, very light detartrage, no sharp curettes. We see we have like uh, general healing of 95.7% healing, no more pockets, no more bleeding. And most patients, like 90% of patients, are completely cured, like 100%. Okay, so this is very exceptional and effective method. Microscope and remove parasite. So it's been shown by Dr. Kais long time ago uh, that health would be like normal cocaid and filament bacteria very rarely one PMN. This is normally held. Gingivitis is about the same thing as cocoid and filament, but you have more bacteria that are moving bacteria, other bacteria that causes gingivitis or periodontitis, but more white cell. Then when you have periodontitis, you have those long actinomyces filaments with the amoeba everywhere, and you have a lot of pus within the sulcus, and sometimes you have a second, uh, uh, second parasite, which is trichomonas, which renders things more uh, aggressive. So it's been done a couple of times by Dr. Kais to show that when you have health, no disease, you never have the amoeba, never. When you have gingivitis, no amoeba either, just bacterial activity. But when you have destructive periodontitis, you have about 100% amoeba. And just curing patient is going back to there. Remove the amoeba, the bacteria will go on by itself in the same time. This also has been shown by Dr. Trevor Lyons, Canadian dentist, in uh, 1989. He had this marvelous book, Introduction to Prozuzerine Fungi and Periodontal Infection, where he shows 
this activity of the amoeba uh, eating the nucleus of the white cell, the amoeba eating the inside of the red cell, and he made the study to make sure it wasn't uh, macrophage. Really clearly it was shown that it is the amoeba antemoeba gingivalis, which we did further study showing with PCR and DNA that it was in fact all the time antemoeba gingivalis. So Dr. Lyons in his book, uh, which is marvelous book, every dentist, every periodontist should learn this book by heart. I mean, it explains everything. And in conclusion, it says that vast majority of patients with destructive periodontal disease are infected with oral protozoa, the amoeba. Elimination of protozoa is followed by arrest of the disease. Arrest of the disease and resolution including regeneration of alveolar bone. This is clear and Dr. Lyons has been doing this for almost all his life with the microscope. So if I can show you here, is a patient that we treated like uh, 17 years ago. Uh, we put implants at that time. Uh, this patient had a lot of periodontal problem, bone result, bone restrictor. We put the implants and you see how nice it is even after 70 years. So this patient had at that time uh, 139 millimeter of uh, millimeter of pocket depth that we would like to see disappear. So when we treated her, it disappeared and went to one millimeter. Okay, deep, only one pocket, one little pocket. And 17 years later is the same. So if we measure this millimeter of deep pocket and how it is when she got treated, we had a pocket healing, 99% healing. So today, most of our patients, we have about the same uh, healing uh, process measurement uh, for most patients. So does entamoeba, is entamoeba gingivalis a pathogen? You see, what are the factors to be pathogen? So to be pathogen, you have to, to have a lytic activity. You have to adhere to self. You have to create cytolysis when after contact. You have to have phagocytosis. You have to have intracellular degradation. And you have to uh, to nest and, uh, and be present all the time. And all those conditions we have with Antemoeba gingivalis. So Antemoeba gingivalis has all the pathogenicity factor to be an invasive amoeba disease of the circus. So we published this in 2003 in French journal Information Martin. We had 20 patients. We treated almost patient, almost cured. No more pocket. Result was middle range was 94% closure at that time. Also, we want to consider the second uh, parasite, Trichomonas tenax. So we, we still see this uh, parasite in the periodontal disease and it's been shown by Dr. Benchimol in 2015 that uh, Trichomonas tenax is, has same pathogenicity as Trichomonas vaginalis. So you may look at this study, so this is very impressive. Same pathogenic activity of Trichomonas tenax as Trichomonas vaginalis in the study. So you see what we can see within the sulcus of patients with periodontal disease. You see those here, two Trichomonas that are like uh, playing together. So this is clearly uh, not reasonable to leave this into your disease. So are Antemoeba gingivalis and Trichomonas tenax are they opportunist? In fact, no. Uh, when you have a normal common cell biofilm, you have little bacteria, cocoid and filament, nothing else. This is common cell biofilm. There is no amoeba in normal biofilm. There is no trichomonas in normal biofilm. 
Normal biofilm is only small coccoid and filamentous bacteria. That's it. Now, when you get those amoeba, Anthemoeba gingivalis or Trichomonocinac, it is a real infection. It is real infection into your mouth. So we could say clearly today, periodontal disease is also a periodontal amoebiasis and or periodontal trichomoniasis and this is not normal to leave this into uh, the gum and the bone. If periodontal disease had been called periodontal amoebiasis one century ago, uh, it would have been cured a long time ago. So remember, periodontal disease is also periodontal amoebiasis, more than 99% and maybe 22% or more is also periodontal trichomoniasis with both are pathogens. So do not leave those parasites into the disease. This is what we do. So comparing our method antiparasitic with other bacterial or used method, surfaceage, this is phototherapy, this is laser, is good, laser a little better, but see how incredible are our results. Here you can find in the journal, French journal, Actualité Odontostomatologique in 2013. See how is the closing of the pockets here compared to surfaceage. Surfaceage uh, deep scaling is only 50% cure, but 50% you still have 50% disease still left. This is why uh, root planing and surfaceage is not really good. It just keep half the tooth disease. So you have to remove those parasites if you want to cure the disease. Also, which is very uh, important, everybody's talking about risk factor. Look at the difference between what is known with bacteria? If you say like stress has two more times risk of causing the disease, maybe. Uh, smoking, you have four more times the disease. Or genes or porphyromonas, you have 16 more times the disease. But if you make the calculation, what is the most important thing? If you have gingivitis first, you have nucleus, you have white cells, you have bacteria, then you have the amoeba getting into your sulcus. So having gingivitis is 150, 100 more time risk of having periodontal disease. And worse, if you take the amoeba and tamoeba uh, with PCR and with microscopy, if you have amoeba, you have 600 to 9,000 times more risk of periodontal disease. So use this because you will not change stress. You rarely uh, stop smokers and genes, not much you can do. You have no power with those risk factors. If you work with gingivitis, no gingivitis, no parasite, here you have power to cure periodontal disease. And it is fairly easy as long as the patient wants to do uh, normal and good hygiene. So how do we do? We do it on about one year time uh, follow-up of the patient. So you see here you have month, first month, second month, so this is one, one appointment, two appointment, three appointment, four and so forth until eight treatment appointment and then we we study at 12 months. So what we do, we remove two toothpaste because toothpaste has not much effect. So we use uh, hydrogen peroxide 1% for brushing and we ask patient to apply bicarbonate powder with salt. It's six bicarbonate to one salt. Patient add it to the gum line and you see the tremendous uh, difference after one month and two months, mostly no more bleeding, no more bleeding. Patient does this morning and night. And then we follow with the microscope, make sure we remove those parasites. So if not with this thing, we add some metranidazole cream three times a day. And one month later, we look if really patient cannot get rid of this, we can use metronidazole, which is 
antiparasitic drug. Metronidazole is so good. Why? Because it is antiparasitic drugs. Okay. So using this, remove the parasites. And when we have done, we are back to this normal biofilm. At that time, we can remove calculus. Sometimes the gum has recessed one, two, sometimes three millimeters, and then you see the calculus and you just remove it. No need for surgery. So at fifth month, we can remove calculus. No hurry because we want to see those uh, this bone rebuild and the uh, gum uh, replace itself. Okay, so we do it one month, two month, three month, four month, and then we give time to patient because patients need time to have this bone rebuild and to have this pocket completely closed. So third step is leave the patient, continue hydrogen peroxide and torrents powder and let heal. And then we reevaluate at 12 months and at that time most patients really could we could say they can, they are cured so we make sure about contamination so during this time when we treat the patient every month patient does hygiene flossing brushing with hydrogen peroxide and powders and disinfectant every month every month they we teach them maybe it takes 15 minutes 20 minutes uh, uh, within, within the office, with the mirror, we do perfect cleaning, perfect cleaning, perfect cleaning. So at the end of the year, patient has perfect uh, cleaning, perfect hygiene, and we can say patient is autonomy uh, on this uh, hygiene. Also, the third important thing in the antiparasitic therapy is change the entourage, change, stop contamination, direct or indirect. This is clear with parasitic disease stop contamination so treat the wife treat the spouse treat the family uh, stop kissing the dogs dogs all have period on the disease so stop kissing the dog dogs so wash your hands watch for the water when you go in the tropical area lots of water are infected with parasites so watch for this and use those disinfection during the treatment so if you do uh, remove the pathogen biofilm then remove calculus make patient having perfect hygiene and stop contamination there is no other result than curing periodontal disease so if we compare again with standard consensus which is uh, we're so sad of this consensus you do surfaces you do uh, root planing and scaling and then you look after two months what happened after two months you on a nine millimeter pocket you may just have a 25 percent uh, closing of the pocket so after two months you have a seven millimeter pocket and it still bleeds so uh, Scaling and waiting two months is absolutely uh, no use, no use because you have again this bleeding and pockets are not closed within two months. If you do this and then you say after two months no healing, then we do surgery, then you remove a little bit more and then you are there and then you still have pocket, you still have disease and you still have uh, uh, bleeding so actual consensus is nonsense nonsense so facage and then surgery is nonsense if you take our antiparasitic therapy go back to normal biofilm with good hygiene with a patient takes one year it just takes more time but it's normal bone needs time to regrow so if you take the time one year and most patients after 12 months they have no more pocket one two three millimeter deep and no bleeding so look at it again antiparasitic technique and microscopy is marvelous to cure periodontal disease if we had time we look at more patient but you see this is total millimeter pocket before and after before and after before and after patient have clearly or almost no more pocket no more bleeding when we are uh, finished with treatment so of course 
you have to learn uh, microscopy, biofilm. It is not very difficult. Take a couple of days and you can learn this. But you have to distinguish between neutrophil, pardon me, neutrophil here. Here you are, three neutrophil. Those are neutrophil with granules inside and uh, nucleus, three lobe or double lobe neutrophil. Very easy. Here you have a macrophage. Sometimes you can see the macrophage. Macrophage has a large oval, very large oval nucleus. So it is clearly distinguishable from an amoeba. Here is an amoeba with the round nucleus, chromatin and karyosome with a pseudopod and it's moving a lot faster. So it is easy to distinguish those three. So I would say like um, it was said from the past from Dr. Uh, Lyons and uh, others, health clearly is easy. Epithelial cell, coquid and filament bacteria not moving, almost no white cell. Gingivitis is bacteria and white cell. And periodontitis is the same bacteria than gingivitis most of the time, but more pus, exonucleophagic activity and a lot of parasite within this. So if you want to learn more as patient or even as dentist or periodontist, you can read our book To Kiss or Not to Kiss, A Cure for Gum Disease. You can find everywhere on uh, uh, Amazon or other, uh, other where. So dentists should have microscope and should have this kind of screen to show patient what this is in their mouth. So if you want more information you can find on parodontit.com in French or you can find on periocure IIP dot com in English and there you find all our research you have Dr. Trevor Lyons book you can read on periocureiip.com also you can find on this site our protocol it's about 100 page uh, and it's uh, yeah you can have it it's copyright in uh, 2014 you have all the treatment modality with all the data you need to do this uh, treatment so in conclusion we can say that antemoeba gingivalis uh, most of the time because it's almost 100 percent is included in the pathogenesis of periodontitis and it is probable that antemoeba gingivalis the amoeba bdation that allows switching from a mild pathology gum gingivitis to a real destructive bone disease we call periodontitis. So antemoeba gingivalis must be considered a potential invasive pathogen in almost all periodontal disease. So treatment must be according to what we see. So current anti-parasitic anti protocol medicine. This is how we can cure periodontal disease easily. And we guarantee success if we remove those uh, pathogen microbes and go back to normal uh, biofilm commensal little bacteria. So leaving the amoeba, leaving antemoeba, gingivalis and gum disease is a medical nonsense. Really it is a foolish thing because it is clearly absent of healthy gum and healthy tooth. So we think there should be a golden rule that that is Periodontists, we want med medical doctors. We want to treat others as one would wish to be treated. And at time we've seen dentists with these parasites into their gum, they want to be treated. And we have to do this for patients also. So it is real a duty to rescue. This is emergency situation because patients have those this parasite infection and they don't know about it and dentists will not inform patient of this tremendous infection. So this is emergency situation to remove this uh, on all human. Any human who sees that in his mouth wants to be rescued from this periodontal pathogen. Okay, and it's sad effect on general health. So we know doing this, removing parasite, periodontal disease is easily curable 
and preventable very easily when you are young adult even adolescent this is clearly easy so we hope in the future we can continue make more studies and have help from universities and researchers from everywhere in the world so we have to cultivate those amoeba make further studies in vitro make animal model histological study and diagnose the presence of amoeba in other area of the tractus uh, mouth uh, and uh, gum disease so better understanding of the disease and its theology better management development of new therapeutic strategy with this microscope and cure uh, for gum disease so exonucleophagy has to be studied this phenomenon when you see the nucleus of the white cell going into the amoeba there we have to have more study with this and help from the research people so we want to thank you for listening to what we have to say we clearly can see gum disease periodontal disease it is easily curable but you have to have a microscope to see the bacteria to see the parasite to see the inflammation and having getting rid of all this you can easily cure periodontal disease so thanks to amib group which is french group of association medical contre les infections buccales which it's about uh, 800 dentists who help us and researchers from um, Institute Pasteur, Dr. Labria, Dr. Santerica. We want to thank all those persons, all those dentists for their help. So thank you for listening and we hope you and all patients are now in good health and cure of this periodontal disease. Thank you very much.